Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Dan Harkins, and I'm a fellow here at uh, HP Aruba. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about some advanced Wi-Fi security we've been working on. So the last time I spoke to you guys, we talked about WPA3 and the things that Aruba has been doing to advance that standard with SweetB and with uh, SAE, and also uh, enhanced Open, which is basically the OWE technology that we, we pioneered. Now I want to talk to you about something called D the Device Provisioning Protocol, or Wi-Fi Easy Connect. Come on. Keep on pressing the wrong way. I'll hold it like this. Okay, so what DPP does is it solves the problem of onboarding uh, IoT devices. And some of these, the problem is that a lot of these devices have either no user interface or they have a really minimal user interface that makes provisioning very difficult. That of course means it doesn't scale very well either. If you've got to spend all of this time on each single device, uh, that's really going to ruin your day because you're going to do you know, a couple hundred of these things. Uh, in addition, security is very difficult when provisioning these devices because typically you need some sort of a credential to get on the network securely, but you also need to get on the network securely to get your credential. So it's, a, it's kind of a problem. So what DPP does is, <clears throat> of course, this is being uh, certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance as a thing called Easy Connect, but the protocol is Device Provisioning Protocol, DPP. And what DPP does is it, it, it's a way to get these devices on the network in a way that's robust, flexible, secure, and efficient. By robust, I mean that it's extremely easy to do it right, and it's extremely difficult to do it wrong, which is the perfect thing you want for someone who's not really trained in how to, to uh, provision these things. Flexible, I mean that the uh, DPP adapts to your use case. It doesn't force your use case to adapt to it, so it has flexible roles. Uh, different people can initiate at different times. So basically, it, 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 will, it will change to whatever you need it to, uh, to do. Secure in that uh, it has a mutual authentication mode and a non-mutual authentication mode for devices that have no user interface. But both of these have a very rational security model behind them. And in, in addition, there's no soft AP provisioning. I'm sure some of you have tried to provision a device before where you, it boots up in a soft AP. And then over an open network, you're supposed to provision a PSK on it, right? And then it's going to reboot and it's going to try and join a network. Well, you've just passed your PSK in the open. Not, not very smart. So with DPP, you don't have any of those problems. Quick question. Yes. You said that is pending with the Wi-Fi Alliance? Uh, no, it uh, can be certified now. Okay. I was going to say, I, I thought it was already... Yeah, it is. It's out. I misheard you. Uh, there will be a R2 coming on. We've been adding some new features to DPP that the Wi-Fi Alliance will be certifying shortly. Uh, there's support for MUD, manufacturer usage descriptions, yeah. things like that. Uh, the other one is efficient. By efficient, I mean it uses uh, modern elliptic curve cryptography, which uses uh, small mathematical operations instead of like what you're typically used to with RSA. So for IoT devices, sensors and things like that that are CPU challenged, you want them to do the most efficient kind of crypto as possible. So the workflow then for DPP is, it's very simple. You've got a handheld device, it's like a tablet or a phone or something like that, and you basically scan a QR code. That's it. And that's what I mean by robust. That is very easy to do correctly, and it's very, very hard to do incorrectly. Uh, the thing that it scans in the QR code is a, this isn't the PSK. You're not scanning the PSK to go on the network. You're scanning an elliptic curve public key. And that, the private analog of that public key is on the device itself. So by scanning the public key, you can trust that this is the device's public key, and then you can then do a security protocol behind that. And that's what DPP is. So basically, that, you know, that was the, the, the one user interface. But the way this, this workflow happens is there's, there's two players in DPP. There's a configurator, and then there's an enrollee whose device to be configured. The configurator is, again, the handheld device, the tablet, the mobile phone. And it defines the SSID and the policy to get on the network. He then scans all these different devices. He'll scan an access point, provisioned as an access point. That access point starts beaconing out a DPP network. He'll scan the TV, provisioned it as a station. He'll scan the printer. They'll scan the DVR, they all get provisioned to stations, and they all automatically connect to the network. So what the user is doing is just pointing and clicking and pointing and clicking and pointing and clicking. He's just set up a network, and he's got devices on the network. Uh, the nice thing about that is that it's all automatic. This is a, it comes out with a new AKM, the dot .11 AKM. This doesn't look like a PSK network. It doesn't look like a dot .1x network. It doesn't look like an open network. It looks like a DPP network. This is a brand new kind of network. And DPP devices will recognize this, and they'll do a, a new exchange to get on that network. 
The other interesting thing to keep in mind is that the configurator is not involved in the network that he's setting up. He can be, he doesn't have to be, and this is again why it's more flexible. <coughs> so I want to talk to you a little bit about why DPP is better than all the other the other uh, options. So uh, I did mention some of this flexibility and extensibility. Uh, the example I gave you was scanning a QR code, and that is the mandatory to implement protocol to support, or mandatory to implement bootstrapping method to support for DPP. There are other ones too. If both, you, if both devices have a user interface, you could enter some passcode, simple four characters or something like that. That will do an authentication exchange, uh, encrypt public keys and exchange them, and uh, establish trust in that method. There's also NFC, so if, you, if both devices have a, a NFC, you can just go up, kind of go, you've just exchanged public keys, and now you can do DPP to that device. Uh, there's other proprietary methods too. You could use the cloud as your bootstrapping method, right? Uh, if I had, say, the serial number of device, I could go out to the cloud and, and you know, prove to the vendor that I actually, I'm a legitimate owner of this device. Here's the serial number, he'll give me back the public key. Now I can use that public key to authenticate the, the device, put it on the network. <coughs> Uh, and again, I mentioned the flexibility about how it, DPP doesn't map to use cases. The, uh, let's the use cases map to DPP. So there's an initiator and a responder in DPP, but either side can be that initiator or responder. The, the, the configurator can be the initiator or the enrollee can be the initiator. And again, these different bootstrapping methods allow for a bunch of different use cases to be supported too. If you don't want to do QR codes, you don't have to do QR codes. Uh, another nice thing is DPP can run over uh, wired media, and I'll, we'll be looking at that uh, shortly in our demo, but basically you can run DPP over uh, TCP or over uh, IEEE uh, 1902. Uh, this is actually really cool because think about uh, for a, a, like a hotspot network. You go to a, a wireless network, you've got no credentials on the network. But if you were able to say scan a QR code, you could use DPP over 4G to connect to some provider's uh, configurator, he'll provision you with a credential to get on that wireless network. So that's something that I don't believe any other of these uh, IoT onboarding uh, technologies can support. So again, just to summarize then, uh, why is DPP better than the other alternatives? Runs over a wired connection, I just gave you a good use case for, for why that's cool. Uh, again, there's no catch-22 where you've got to, you know, you have to get on the network to get a credential, but you need a credential to get on the network, so that, that whole uh, problem is, is bypassed. Uh, usually the way people bypass that is to do this soft AP, which again, you're passing your security credential in the clear over a network. It's a giant leap of faith for security. DPP doesn't have that leap of faith. Robust, misuse resistant, easy to use correctly, very hard to use incorrectly. Uh, you can do batch provisioning. Let's say that you've got to, you've got to install 20 or 30 devices, right? As you're taking them out of the box, you can just kind of scan the QR code either on the back side or on the packing material. So you just take it out, scans, take it out, scan. None of these devices have been provisioned yet. Somebody else can go set them all up and then you just go, okay, beep. And you can, in parallel, provision all of these devices. <clears throat> so batch provisioning is a, another nice, a nice way of, 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 of supporting this, uh, this model. Another thing is it doesn't require EAP. The, the, the WFA protocol that DPP replaces is WPS, which of course has its own set of security problems. But the other thing is uh, WPS used EAP. And it was really weird because the EAP method required uh, it to return fail. If it returned fail, it meant it was success, which caused kind of problems with other state machines like your .1x state machine. If you get a fail back from your EAP method, it's supposed to be failure, but not for WPS. So, you know, it's kind of hokey, but DPP doesn't use EAP. It's all done with uh, .11 action frames. <clears throat> and again, it addresses some of these use cases uh, that are not supported by alternatives because of its, its uh, flexibility and gen generality. So this is how Aruba is implementing DPP. Again, I mentioned it works over wired. So what we do is the controller is operating as a configurator and he speaks DPP to devices through what's called a relay. So the controller is speaking DPP over a TCP connection. These relays basically take TCP, convert it into a .11 packet, send it out to the, to the uh, device. The device responds to the relay. The relay takes that, strips off the .11 header, slaps on a TCP header, and sends it back. So the relay just kind of goes like this, and uh, the controller will provision the device. We've got a uh, handheld device is running uh, an Aruba-developed uh, application 
that you scan the QR code, it will communicate back to the controller and all this stuff just happens. So. Ultimately, what is the encryption though in the air? I'm sorry if I missed it. The encryption on the air, uh, so once this, the device gets provisioned with, uh, it's called a connector. So it's like a, I think it's not a certificate, but it's like a certificate. It's a signed public key. But the format is a JSON web key, not some, it's not an ASN that one blob. So, but uh, if DPP devices have a, one of these connectors, the way they get on the network is the device will say, oh, I see a DPP network. And he'll send his signed connector saying, I've got a connector signed by this configurator. And the AP goes, I've got a connector signed by that configurator too. So they've exchanged these connectors. And then the connector is a public key. So what the devices can then do is do a Diffie-Hellman key exchange. I have your public key, you have my public key. And we've authenticated it because it's signed by the same, the same configurator. We, we, we can drive a, a PMK and do the four-way handshake that about 11 defined. So the, the network access is, is the same as we've always had. It's CCMP. Dot 11 CCMP. The, the, the uh, security in the DPP exchange is again, it's doing uh, lip to curve Diffie Hellman's and it's doing uh, AES SIV for the authenticated encryption. So, how extensible do you picture something like this? Will it ever displace current things and move beyond AO IoT? Just so you're not doing something for this group and something for that group, you know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> I think it can grow up a little bit more than simply IoT, more than like sensors and things like that. One of the additions that I want to add to DPP and the Wi-Fi Alliance is to have it get a X509 certificate. So there's a lot of use cases where the network requires you to have a certificate and you, they want you to do dot one X to get a device on the network. Now if you've got some, uh, I don't know, a switch, limited user interface, it doesn't have a cert, it's not on the network, you plug it in, it could do DPP over the wire or over the air, and it could get a connector or a certificate, and now it's on the network. So uh, that, and also, as I mentioned, the, uh, the uh, hotspot use case, where you want to get a credential to get on the network, but you don't have a credential, you don't have any uh, existing relationship. So you can do DPP over, say, a 4G link, over the, Get your, get your credential, now you get on the network. So I, I, think, it, I think it can grow. Okay. Now, I want to get into this demo here. Come on. So, uh, how much experience have you, do you have any training in provisioning handheld printers? No, okay, no perfect. Do you have any training in provisioning handheld printers? No. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so you guys are gonna provision these handheld printers. Uh, don't, don't start yet, don't start yet. This is a contest. So, bring up the app. So, when I say go, I want you to scan the QR code with this app. And I want you to start provisioning, okay? Ready, go. Okay. What's taking so long, Francois? <laughs> Come on, JD. So, What's up? Did you get a green? You got a green check. Yeah. Six, does that have an IP address? Yeah. It does. Let's see if uh, let's see if this worked. Can you print something. That's what I'm gonna try and do. Okay. It works. It works. You done yet? How are you doing? Um, yeah, it's done. It's <laughs> <laughs> so. That's how, that's how easy this is. You had absolutely no training in, in doing this, but mm, you were able to provision at least a printer. So it's the same, the same workflow for basically any of these DPP devices. Point, beep, that's it. There's no, no options, there's no configuration, there's no nothing, it just works. So uh, questions, I think I've got one minute I'm being told. Okay. So, oh. uh, so in this scenario, the, the, the device that you're provisioning with, at, that's scanning the QR code, has actually no direct communication with the device that it's contacting the controller, the controller's telling the AP to provision it over. Yes, in our, in our case, yes. But uh, in the, the way DPP is defined, it's assuming that the configurator would be speaking dot eleven action frames. But in our case, it's not. It communicates to the controller, the commu controller does the... That's so yeah, yes, good question. So you could, be, you could be connected to a different society? 
Uh, it's not, it doesn't even have, yes, could be connected to a different, different SSID. Okay. 